standard 10 history chapter number 4 history of indian arts what is art it is a natural human instinct to want to share his experience wisdom and also emotions when that instinct results in a beautiful creation it is acknowledged as art the artist's power of imagination sensibility state of emotion and his skills are the crucial factors at the root of artistic creation visual arts and performing arts artistic creations are of two types visual arts and performing arts the sanskrit term for the first type is drikkala and for the second type lalit or angik kala many examples of prehistoric rock art have been discovered at many sites in the world it proves that the origin of visual arts is as old as the stone age man folk arts and classical arts there are two distinct traditions of art folk art and classical art folk art is a tradition that has continued from the prehistoric times the expression of folk art is a natural part of people's way of living hence its expression is spontaneous folk art is created by collective participation of the members of a social group classical art on the other hand is expressed within an established frame of consistent rules it needs a prolonged training to master any form of classical art style in art artists tend to have their own method of working it is known as the style of the artist when a style is adopted by many artists over a prolonged period of time it may become a tradition such tradition gets established as an art style various art styles develop in every culture which are characteristic of a certain period and region such styles are helpful in studying art history indian traditions of visual arts drikkala the art of painting and sculpting are visual arts maratha style of painting maratha paintings is an example of art style the style known as maratha paintings began to develop in the latter half of the 17th century ce this style consists of colored paintings and they occur as murals and also miniatures used in manuscripts murals of maratha style can be seen in the old wadas at the places like wai Menavali and Satara in Maharashtra the maratha style was influenced by the rajput and european styles of painting painting styles help us in understanding various things about the times in which it was developed such as the lifestyle attires customs etc art of painting paintings are two dimensional for example sketches or paintings of nature objects and individuals they are done on various surfaces such as rocks walls papers canvas of different types and earthen pots the mural of bodhisattva at ajanta caves is one of the finest example of the art of painting folk styles of paintings Rock paintings dating to stone ages have been discovered in many countries. In India, there are rock painting sites in the states of Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Uttarakhand, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. The rock paintings in the caves at Bhimbetka are famous. Bhimbetka is a world heritage site. Rock paintings usually depict human, animal and geometric figures however the style of rock painting seems to be changing according to the cultural changes 
from stone ages to the beginning of agriculture the change is visible in the depiction of flora and fauna or it may be evident in the style of portraying various figures and also in the colors that were used black red and white colors were used in the rock paintings which were made from natural substances with the help of rock paintings we can understand the knowledge of ancient people about their natural surroundings and also the way they exploited available natural resources the tradition of folk style of paintings closely resembles the style of rock paintings customs such as decorating the house walls and courtyards rangavali by drawing various figures and symbols or using panels of paintings to narrate stories helped to develop regional styles of folk paintings do you know the traditions of varli painting and pingul or chitrakatti in maharashtra are amongst the finest examples of folk style of paintings jivya somya mhase the artist in thane district has played a great role in making the varli style of paintings very popular he has been honored with a number of national and international awards for his paintings in the year 2011 he was awarded padma shri it is interesting to know the tradition of chitrakatti is mentioned in manasolas a book written by the chalukya king Someshwara in the 12th century CE it confirms the antiquity of this tradition the tradition of narrating stories from ramayana or mahabharata with the help of wooden puppets and paintings is known as chitrakatti or pinguli tradition the people who still practice the art of pingul live in a village called pinguli they belong to thakka tribal community It is located in the Konkan region near Kudal. The Chitrakatti pictures are drawn on a paper and painted in colors made from natural substances. It takes 30-50 pictures to complete the narration of a single story. These pictures are preserved very carefully and handed down from one generation to another. The artists and the government are trying to preserve the tradition. which is on the verge of extinction classical styles of painting the ancient indian texts have explained various aspects of arts in great details there are altogether 64 arts mentioned in these texts the art of painting is mentioned as alakyam or alakya vidya It is said to have six main aspects shadange the ancient indian scholars studied these six aspects very minutely they include rupa bheda different shapes and forms pramana proportionate depiction of various features of an image bhava expressions lavanya yojana aesthetics sadrushyata a color resemblance to reality varnika bhang color composition agama texts of various religious sects puranas and vastu shastra texts explain the arts of painting and sculpting in the context of temple architecture miniature paintings in manuscripts the miniature paintings in the early manuscripts show an influence of persian style the deccan miniature style was developed under the patronage of the deccan sultanates during the reign of akbar the mughal emperor the mughal miniature style showing a blend of indian and persian styles was developed western style of painting in the british period Indian artists came under the influence of European style of painting. An art school was established under the leadership of James Wales, a Scottish artist, in the times of Savai Madhav Rao Peshwe in Shaniwarwada in Pune. He had done a portrait of Savai Madhav Rao and Nana Fadnavis. Gagaram Tambat, 
a marathi artist who work with whales deserves a special mention here he had made drawings of the rock cut caves at verul and karle some of his drawings are preserved in the yale center of british art of yale university exact portrayal of the object of the painting is characteristic of the european style a number of renowned artists were trained in the jj school of art and industry which was established in 1857 ce offering courses in european style of painting pestenji bomanji an alumni of this school made replicas of ajanta paintings sculptural art sculptures are three dimensional such as images statues pots and objects with artistic embellishment for creating sculptures either rock or metal or clay is used rock sculptures are made by carving metal sculptures are made with the help of molds and clay sculptures are formed either directly with hands or by using molds the entire temple of kailasa at veerul is a unique monolithic sculpture carved out of a single rock the lion capital of the ashokan pillar found at sarnath is the national emblem of india folk styles of sculptural art the sculptural art is also as ancient as the art of painting dating back to stone ages carving tools out of stone can said to be the beginning of sculptural art the custom of making clay images for rituals has been prevalent in india since harappan times it has continued till today in many regions like bengal bihar gujarat rajasthan etc the ganesha idols masks of gauri bull figurines made for the festival of belpora wooden memorials veer gulls memorial stones the decorated clay storage beans etc are a few examples of the folk traditions of sculptural art classical styles of sculptural art the harappan seals stone and bronze statues tell us about the 5000 years old or even older tradition of the indian tradition of sculptural art it is said that the tradition of carving out stone sculptures of larger size began in the mauryan period with the ashokan pillars the sachi stupa was erected in emperor ashoka's time however the beautiful sculptural embellishments of the stupa are supposed to be later additions the sculptures at bharat are testimonies of the continuous development of sculptural art in india buddhism was spread far and wide in many countries outside india the tradition of erecting buddhist stupas began in those countries as well the stupa at borobudur in indonesia is the largest stupa in the world it was built during the 8th 9th century ce it was declared as a world heritage site in 1991 indian iconography the gandhara school of art came into being in the 2nd century bce in afghanistan and neighboring regions it had greek and persian influence the 1st to 3rd century ce that is the kushana period saw the rise of mathura school of art the mathura school laid the foundation of indian iconography iconography is a branch of knowledge which includes everything about making of images of gods and goddesses the kushana kings made use of images of various deities on their coins during the periods of gupta empire the iconographic rules were formulated and standards for sculpture art were set the art of making bronze images was developed under the patronage of chola kings during 19th to 13th century bronze idols of gods and goddesses like shiva parvati natraj lakshmi vishnu etc were made in this period architecture and sculpture 
There are a number of rock cut caves in India. The tradition of rock cut caves originated in India in the 3rd century BCE. Technically, the entire composition of a rock cut cave represents a union of architecture and sculptural art. Its entrances, interiors with its carved columns and images are excellent specimens of sculptural art. The paintings on the walls and ceiling have survived in some of the caves still today. The rock cut caves at Ajanta and Verul in Maharashtra were declared as World Heritage in 1983. The temple architecture in India began to develop around 4th century CE during the Gupta period. The temples built at the beginning of Gupta period had only the Scantum, Scantorum, Garbhagriha and a veranda with four columns. The temple architecture in India had reached its peak at the 8th century CE. This is easily testified by the magnificent composition of the Kailas temple of Verul. By the medieval period, various styles of temple architecture had developed in India. The styles of temple architecture are identified by the style of the tower, Shikhara. The Nagara style of North India and the Dravida style of South India are the two principal styles of Indian temple architecture. A blend of these two styles is known as Vesara style. The Bhumija style seen in Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra has a close resemblance to the Nagara style from the structural viewpoint. In the Bhumija style, series of miniature towers are arranged, which become smaller toward the top. Hence, the tower appears to be continuously rising from the base of the temple to the top. In the medieval period, under the patronage of Muslim sultanates, many styles of architecture such as Persian, Central Asian, Arabic and pre-Islamic native Indian styles were blended together creating the Islamic architecture of India. Many beautiful buildings were created. The Qutub Minar at Mehroli, near Delhi, Taj Mahal at Agra, Gol Gumbas at Bijapur in Karnataka are the world famous example of the Islamic architecture of India. The construction of the building of Qutub Minar started during the reign of Qutubuddin Aibak, 12th century CE and was completed in the reign of Altmash, 13th century. Qutub Minar is the highest minaret in the world. It is 73 meters, 240 feet in height. The Qutub Minar complex of buildings has been declared as a world heritage. The Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan built Taj Mahal in the memory of his queen Mumtaz Mahal. The Taj Mahal is looked upon as the paramount example of the beauty of Islamic architecture in India. This world famous building has been declared as world heritage by UNESCO. The Gol Gumbas at Bijapur in Karnataka was built in the 17th century CE. This grand building houses the bureau of Muhammad Adil Shah of Bijapur. Inside the dome, after which the building is named, there is a round gallery. Even a slight whisper by a person standing in this gallery can be heard everywhere and if somebody claps from here, its echo can be heard many times. During the British period, a new architectural style arose in India. It is known as Indo-Gothic architectural style. Buildings like churches, government offices, residences of top officials, railway stations were built in this style during the British period. The building of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Railway Terminus, Mumbai, is the finest example of the Indo-Gothic architecture and it is a world heritage site. It is interesting to know Temples in Maharashtra built in 12th to 13th centuries are known as Hemad Panti temples. The outer walls of Hemad Panti temples are built in a star shape. In the star shape plan, the outer walls of the temple has a zigzag design. This results into an interesting effect of alternating light and shadow. The important characteristic of Hemad Panti temple is its masonry. The walls are built without using any mortar by locking the stones by using the technique of tenon and mortise joints.
द अंबरेश्वर टेम्पल एट अंबरनाथ नियर मुंबई गोंडेश्वर टेम्पल एट सिन्नर नियर नासिक आउंद नागनाथ टेम्पल इन द हिंगोली डिस्ट्रिक्ट आर अ फ्यू फाइनेस्ट एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ द हेमाडपंती स्टाइल देयर प्लान इज स्टार शेप्ड द हेमाडपंती टेम्पल्स आर फाउंड एट सेवरल प्लेसेस इन महाराष्ट्र Indian traditions of performing arts Traditions of performing folk arts India has independent and varied traditions of folk songs folk instrumental music folk dances and folk theater which are characteristic of every particular region There exist many rich traditions of performing folk arts in Maharashtra also They developed as an integral part of the religious festivals and social life to name a few as examples we may mention koli dance tarappa dance dash avatar of konkan powada kirtan jagar gondhar etc traditions of classical performing arts india has a rich heritage of classical performing arts too The next of Natya Shastra written by Bharat Muni is supposed to be the earliest one discussing music and theater. The nine moods, nine rasas supposed to be fundamental in the presentation of Indian performing arts are Shringar, Love, Hasya, Yuma, Vibhatsa, Repulsion, Raudra, Terrible, Karuna, Sad, Veer, Heroic, Bhayanak fearful adbhut wondrous and shant peaceful indian people came into contact with cultural traditions of other nations and that resulted into blending of many different streams in the presentation of indian performing arts enriching them over time as a result many styles of presenting of classical vocal music instrumental music and dance came into existence Various schools preserving those styles were also created. There are two main branches of the Indian classical music: Hindustani music and Carnatic music. Similarly, there are two forms of it: classical, shastriya, and semi-classical, upashastriya. The semi-classical has included many styles of folk music. A beautiful blend of all three forms of music, vocal instrumental and dance can be seen in various indian classical dance forms like kathak of north india lavni of maharashtra odissi of odisha bharatnatyam of tamil nadu and kathakali and mohinihattam of kerala in india in the post independence period various festivals of music and dance are organized with a view to make it accessible to common people Many people attend these festivals including Indians and foreigners alike. The Savai Gandharva festival of Pune is a famous one. Lately, we can see an inclination towards experimenting and creating fusion of various music styles by trying to overcome the limitations imposed by a traditional style or school. Pandit Uday Shankar is a prominent name among such artists who created a new style. He successfully created a fusion of Indian classical dance and European opera. He also included various forms of folk dance in his style. Thus, the scope of the presentation of Indian performing arts seems to be constantly expanding. The same phenomena is apparent in the field of Indian visual arts. Do you know? The ruler of Bijapur Ibrahim Adil Shah II wrote a text in Persian language entitled Kitab-e Navras. This text is about Indian classical music. It includes verses sung in Dhrupad style and enables the audience to experience the joy of excellent poetry. Dr. Arun Prabhu ne has edited this text in Marathi. The translation of the verse printed on the cover of this text reads as follows. O oh, Mother Saraswati you are the divine light in the world and you are complete with all qualities if ibrahim receives your grace blessings 
the poetry of the Navras will become eternal. Art, Applied Art and Professional Opportunities Arts Art history is an independent branch of knowledge. Various opportunities of research are available in this field. Art historians can work in the field of journalism. Art market is an independent field. It calls for special expertise to assess the exact value of an art object or to ensure that it is genuine. An expert with deep understanding of art history is required for this task. Heritage management and cultural tourism are recently developed fields. In these fields, students of art can find many professional opportunities. Museums and archives management, library science and information technology, archaeological research, Indology are some important fields in this regard. Applied Art The visual and performing arts are primarily looked upon as the means of entertainment for people. The artist performs primarily with this purpose. However, there is a scope to combine an artistic creation with utility value to make it economically viable. Thus, an artistic creation with a utilitarian purpose is called applied art. Industry and advertisement, interior design and production of ornamental object Art design of stage backdrops, Nepatya, art direction of films and television, creating attractive layouts of books, magazines, calligraphy, production of greeting cards, invitation cards, customized stationery, gift objects, etc. are the fields of applied arts. The field of architecture, photography are also part of applied arts. Nowadays, Still, an animated graphics created with the help of computers are used for various purposes. This is also applied art. Ornaments, artistic creations of metals, earthen pots with colorful designs, objects made from cane and bamboo, beautiful glass objects, attractive textiles and clothing, etc. all can be listed under applied arts. Every field mentioned above requires a detailed planning and meticulous management at every stage of production. It is essential to employ trained and skilled individuals at every stage. Some of the production processes of artistic objects have a history of certain traditions. The development of each productive process has its own history. Hence, the syllabi of training courses of art design include the history of various industrial and cultural traditions. There are a few institutions in India which offer technical and occupational training in the above mentioned fields. Among them, National Institute of Design in Ahmedabad, Gujarat is a world-renowned institute. This institute has introduced an online course since 2015. In the next lesson, we will learn about mass media and history.